All right, welcome back. You're never going to believe it. It's Freaky Friday, and you're watching Liquid Lunch on Biz TV. I'm John Tobacco. Still joined by the man of the hour who, who announced his retirement from AM 970, The Answer, today. Frank Morano's with us in his uh, soon-to-be former lair at uh, AM That's 970. Right. So um, I haven't seen many people positing any guesses as to where you're going. I think maybe some of the audience members can put the pieces together without me. Well, um, but I, I think the, the audience has better things to worry about. They're concerned with their own lives. They don't need to uh, concern themselves with, uh, you know, where I'm going to be going, especially since I said I'm going to tell everybody next week. Okay. All right. I was just trying to guess, you know, or at least give people a few clues to try to build the suspense. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, I thought I was helping you cause by uh, creating a little. Oh boy! I well, you're right. I could use all the I could use all the help I could get in the uh, in the buzz department. Now, if people tune into your radio show, which is still on AM 970, and it's a uh, and it's a uh, farewell performance this Sunday, um, will people find out on Sunday where you're going? Um, well, you know, I'm going to provide a number of clues, but I, I will talk with both my current employer and my new employer and, um, and see what they think is, is important. I mean, most of the time in radio, John, you don't usually get an opportunity to do a last show. Uh, usually, you know, as, as soon as you're done, they wa have someone watch you fill a box with all of your things and then and make sure you're you out the door. <laughs> and make sure you never have an opportunity. So I think, um, you know, uh, the fact that I'm getting a last show for five hours Sunday morning, it's an indication of the kind of goodwill that uh, that 970 and me have built up, you know, over the last ten and a half years. Goodwill? Oh. My God, they should give you a Rolex on your way out the door, the amount of work you put in there. Now, Jerry Crowley, that's uh, one heck of a guy, that's for sure. So I could see why you were so motivated to uh, work so hard for him because... You know, he's an A number one guy. Um, but I am worried for Jerry now because without your unique brand of production and guest booking and fact provision to Joe, I'm worried that the show's going to be missing something. I know Sabilia will do a good job. He's a great kid, but I'm worried. Well, one of the things that you learn uh, pretty early on in radio is that absolutely nobody is irreplaceable. Uh, a month from now, it will be as it, it'll be Frank who people they miss you for a day or two and a week. It's OK. We're kind of starting to realize how we can do things without Frank. And then in two weeks, it's all right. Well, Frank actually didn't do that much after all a month. I won't even be remembered. Right. And, you know. You'll call Jerry two weeks from now, and he'll have Beyonce on in the background. Don't you ever get to thinking <laughs> you're irreplaceable. It's true. Or, you it's know, true. everything you own in a box to the left. You know, there's a number of exactly. ways he can use Beyonce against you. But who knows? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, who knows? You could be, you know, they may have just, you know, they may have just traded Eli Manning. Um to the Giants, and you could go on to be, you know, a du double Super Bowl winner, double MVP, um, and some other station with some unknown at this point call letters will uh, be the will be the thankful recipient. Yeah, uh, you know, a, a lot of people said that uh, my time at 970, and I'm not saying this, but a lot of people have made this analogy, keeping it in a realm you're comfortable with in the world of sports, that it's a lot like uh, when the Mets had Nolan Ryan, right? He had some, he won a World Series with the Mets. He had some great moments with the Mets. Uh, but uh, overall, you know, even though the Mets knew that he was a good pitcher, they were never able, for whatever reason, to get his full potential out of him, and he really didn't explode as a force until he went to the Angels and the Astros. Wow. So um, even though you didn't say it, you're alleging there are comparisons out there between your radio prowess and Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan's pitching prowess early in his career. Well, I'm not alleging it, but others might be. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I said you're alleging that others are saying that's, that. that. That's right. That's I don't right. have any doc. You know how I like to fact check my journalism, and I didn't have any evidentiary proof of others saying it, so I said allegedly. But um, I happen to think that you're already in that category. 
um, Frankie, if you ask me. And, um, mm. you know, there's like famous hockey players like Ray Bork. Everybody knows Ray Bork. Um, famous football players like uh, Red Grange, you know. Um, and they all wore like really uh, iconic numbers also. So I drop a few hints there. But uh, 